Hello everybody and welcome to this video talk entitled Piecewise Affine Dynamical Models of Time Petrinets and Applications to Emergency Call Centers. I'm Marin Boyer and this is a joint work with my PhD advisors Xavier Lamijon and Stéphane Gobert. So let me begin this presentation by telling you our motivations. Uh, we modelize emergency call centers by Petrinets and we analyze their dynamics. So this is a work that we've been doing for a couple of years in partnership with French emergency services, uh, namely the PFAU for Police and Fire Brigade and the SAMU for Emergency Health Services in Paris area. These emergency call centers are naturally systems that are subject to synchronization and concurrency phenomena, like between calls and answering agents, as well as priority mechanisms to guarantee the best allocation of the resources. In our conference paper, we establish a correspondence between time between nets and semi-Markov decision processes. This correspondence is detailed in this table and will be further explained later. When there are no priority rules, we derive from it four main results, namely the convergence of the dynamics towards affine regimes, a characterization of the deviation to the average growth, and we also suggest an LP approach to compute the throughput of the nets as well as the computation of a polyadual phase diagram in terms of resources. We also carry out the study of a more complex system with priorities, a monitored reservoir mechanism for emergency health call centers that we will detail at the end of this talk. And what's interesting is that we interpret the priorities as negative probabilities. And even though some of the above results do not hold anymore, we still obtain phase diagram in practice. So let me introduce you to what will be our main example of Petronet in this talk. So it's a simple model of emergency medical service call center using a time petrinet. Uh, and from here, you can already recognize a graph of places and transitions. And we're going to consider that there are three types of resource places in this net. So we have three types of agents in this call center. We have first medical regulation assistants or MRAs who pick up the calls and two types of doctors, the emergency physicians who deal with very urgent calls like vital distress and the general practitioners who deal with less urgent calls. So when a call arrives in this utmost place here, there are three main possible paths that it can follow. Either the patient will need the emergency physician, either he will need the GP, or sometimes it may happen that the call is an error and the caller doesn't need any doctor at all. So for example, suppose that we have a patient token arriving here and this patient needs to talk to a GP. So as soon as a medical regulation assistant is available, the first transition will fire a token in this place ruled by a preselection. And because the patient needs to talk to a GP, it's going to be routed in this place here, where a conversation between the MRA and the patient takes place to fill up basic information, to ask for symptoms, etc., which could take a minute or two. When this conversation is over, the MRA is released and goes back to his pool, while the patient is pushed to a writing room waiting for the GP to be available. And when the GP is available, the token moves to this consultation place, and when it's finished, the GP goes back to its pool. Now suppose that we have a patient whose call is very serious and needs to talk to the emergency physician. So after an MRA is available, the token will be routed to this other conversation place, to again fill up information and ask for symptoms. And because this is a very urgent call, when this conversation is finished, the MRA is not released yet. He waits for the emergency physician to be available and they synchronize together. The MRA will pass on a brief summary of the situation and it's only after this step that the MRA is released. So there is no waiting room for the emergency physician. And now the doctor takes the patient in telephonic conversation. So now that we have explained the patient's topology, we can specify its parameters, like how many calls per hour do arrive, how long do the conversations and the consultations last, what is the proportion of patients in the different paths, and so on. And we will also simplify this patient a bit, because for our use case, what we really want to focus on is the interaction between the MRA and the emergency physician, which really is the critical link here. So remark that for both the MRA path and the GP path, the MRA is released just after the conversation with the patient is over. So we can merge these two branches together with equivalent parameters, and this won't affect the behavior of MRAs. And also, if you look at these two conversation places with different holding times, well, we can also put an equivalent holding time in the pre-selection place, and it will not change the behavior of the net when a large number of tokens go through it. So now, because we want to study the dynamics of patronets, we're going to need the following definition. 
let q be a transition of a pattern net, we call counter function of q the function zq, such that zq of t is the number of tokens fired by transition q up to time t. So it is quite immediate to see that counter functions are non-decreasing mappings everywhere right continuous and with left limits everywhere. So typically, counter functions could look like this. Uh, they are piecewise constant and you get steps whenever tokens are fired. Uh, we should also mention that in this talk, we are going to study a continuous relaxation of the petunet behavior, allowing non-integer firings and token split. So in this case, we have the following proposition. Um, the counter functions satisfy a min plus recursive system with time delays of the form zq of t is a minimum uh, taken over the upstream places of q of some cpq plus uh, zq prime delayed uh, by uh, time tau p. So, just before illustrating this proposition on our example, I should precise that this CPQ term here relates to the initial marking of place P, and this alpha PQQ prime here relates to upstream transitions of place P and their routing proportions. So, let's go back to our example and see how it works. So, this is, this is the pattern that we had, and I'm denoting by tau 1, tau 2, and tau 3 the conversation times, by lambda the arrival rate of inbound calls, and by pi the fraction of those calls who require the emergency physician. So it's not difficult from the topology of the net to obtain the dynamics equation of the counters. Um, let me illustrate one or two of these. Uh, for example, if you consider this equation here, z5 of t equals z4 of tau minus tau 3, it means that transition v5 is going to fire as many tokens as z4 Two three units of time before, which is normal because there is a place with holding time two three in between. Likewise, if you look at the first equation here, it tells you that z1, the number of calls picked up by the MRAs, uh, is the minimum of the number of arrived calls, and the accumulated number of MRAs available to pick up calls, that is, uh, the initial marking NA plus the number of MRAs released from previous calls. Now, a central question is, how does this system behave, depending on the number of agents? Like, if we have NA, MRAs, and NP emergency physicians, is that enough agents or not, for example? And in this talk, we will mainly address the long-run behavior of such system for steady inflow lambda and constant call centers parameters. So now, let us hold off patronets for a bit and do a quick detour via semi-Markov decision processes. So, Markov decision processes, or MDPs, are a famous class of one-player stochastic games in which a player evolves through states by playing actions and thus gaining rewards. So, here is a small example where you have three states, from state 1 and 2 you can play two actions, and from state 3 you can only play one action, and here to earn as much money as possible, from state 1 you want to pull the $1 action, and from state 2 you want to pull the $0 action. But what happens is that, after pulling an action, you go to all the states according to transition probabilities. So here is what a possible history of the game could be, starting in state 1. So, say you are greedy, you choose to play the $1 action, after which you can go to states 2 or 3 with equal prob probability. Here, say you are lucky, and you go to state 3, so now you can gain $10, you are happy, and you can go back to state 1. Now you pull the $1 action again, but this time you get unlucky, and you go to state 2. Now, knowing that there is a 75% chance to make up for your cost if you sacrifice $2, you pull the minus $2 action, but again you get unlucky and you go back to state 1, and you decide to be less greedy, gain 0, etc, etc. So, the central problem is that one looks for the best choices of actions to play, that's what we call a policy, to minimize the expected costs over a finite horizon, so like say we have only n moves to play. And among variants, a big question is that can we minimize our cost over an infinite horizon for a criteria such as discounted cost or average cost? So let us replace the history again. Um, for the discounted cost, the more your earnings happen far in the future, the more they get discounted. So after these two first moves, you would have a total cost of gamma plus 10 gamma squared if gamma is your discount rate. And as far as the average cost is concerned, you just have to compute the mean. So here it makes 11 halves. And you keep on like this, and your goal is to minimize these limits when the number of moves tends to infinity. One talks about semi-Markov decision processes, when after pulling an action and gaining the reward, the player must wait during a holding time, which is action dependent, before going to next state. So now, because some actions consume more time than others, there is a trade-off to make between earning money and not losing time. 
So if I replace the history of the previous game, now pulling the first actions would consume like 2 minutes, the second one would consume 1 minute, and for the third move, you place this 2 minutes action again, so that before the move number 4, you have earned $12 in 4 minutes. And that's how you would obtain your average cost. And again, you keep on like that, and you want to minimize this limit, as the time tends to infinity. So now, just to formalize things a little bit, let us introduce a very classic object in MDPs, which is the value function. We call the value function the time-dependent vector v, such that v of i and t is the least possible cost incurred up to time t by starting the game in state i. So what you really recognize in this formula is the minimum expected sum of cost when you start in state i and you can play for time t. And the little f here refers to strategies, which, shortly put, are all the ways that you can play the game. So the infimum is taken over strategies. No, what is very interesting is that the value function satisfies the following Bellman type equation. Um, this equation tells us that the least cost that you can expect starting from state i and playing for time t is the minimum over all playable actions of the action cost plus the least cost that you can expect from over state j's playing for time t diminished by the action holding time and weighed by the probabilities that the action you pull make you visit these state j's. And just like the previous definition, we can also introduce a formal definition of the average cost, defined as the vector g, where gi is the least possible average cost per unit time incurred over an infinite horizon, starting the game in set i. So the main difference between the definition of the average cost compared with the value function is of course this term 1 over t, which takes the average. Now, having recalled these results on SMDPs, we are ready to state as announced that the continuous relaxation of the dynamics of priority-free time patronets is equivalent to the dynamic programming equation of a SMDP. To prove it, we will use the general form of the counters equation we already had, and we slightly adapt the alpha coefficients by introducing beta coefficients, who sum up to 1, so that the beta is a probability vector. Then we can write the following equality, but by comparison with SMDPs, you can see that we have an exact correspondence between the two forms of zq of t and v of i and t. Actually, we can even do a little bit better, because here you can see that we had to introduce a coefficient kappa corresponding to a discount factor in order to obtain the probabilities beta. And to that purpose, we say that a vector e is a stoichiometric invariant of the patronet if it satisfies this equality. And in this case, we can refine the correspondence theorem to obtain that the continuous relaxation of the dynamics of priority-free time patronets with a positive stoichiometric invariant is equivalent to the dynamic programming equation of a non-discounted SMDP. Well, the, the proof is straightforward, you just have to consider the new counter ZQ over EQ, and now you can get rid of the discount factor here. So now, let us take a minute to explore this correspondence further and illustrate it on our running example of emergency health call center. We have already noticed that there is a total formal correspondence between the counter functions of the time patronets and finite horizon value function of SMDPs. A remarkable point, though, is that the time has not the same status in both equations. Indeed, for time patronets, t is the time elapsed since the beginning of the dynamics, while for SMDPs, t is the time remaining to leave before the game ends. So patronets really correspond to backward SMDPs. Now, let's say that we want to build the SMDP corresponding to our example patronet. We first have to remark that its states, for instance here i, correspond to transitions of the patronet, for instance here q. So we have to introduce as many states as transitions, here from 0 to 5. Next, we notice that the playable actions from states in the SMDP correspond to the upstream places of transition of the patronet, so we need to introduce actions in accordance. Finally, the nature moves are the missing edges in the patronet. Observe again how the arrows go backward between the patronet and the SMDP. Now we just have to add the parameters of the SMDP, namely its costs, holding times and probabilities, that we build from those of the patronet. To finish, observe how the synchronization patterns of patronets correspond to multiple playable actions in the SMDP, and the preselection routing corresponds to probabilistic moves. Let us now see consequences of these correspondence theorems. Recall that we are interested in the long-run behavior of the patronet's dynamics, so, for instance, the asymptotic growth of the transition counter variables. What you can see from the simulation picture is that after a long time is elapsed, the v functions look like affine functions. Now, thanks to the previous correspondence theorem, we know that the limit zq of t over t 
is equal to the best average cost of the corresponding SMD P. And because results are known for it, we can now state our main theorem. Suppose the patronet admits the positive stoichiometric invariant and has no priority rule, then, to begin with, there exists an affine stationary regime, meaning that there are two vectors rho and u, such that if we initialize the dynamics with rho t plus u, then this dynamics propagates along forever. More interestingly, this vector rho is universal, which means that for any initial condition, the solution z of t of the dynamics asymptotically tends to rho t, up to some term which has the magnitude of a constant. And finally, if the holding times of the patronets are integer, we can show that the deviation v of t minus rho t converges to periodic orbits. So now, just to give quick proof ingredients, the first two points can be seen as an extension of Kohlberg theorem on the existence of an invariant half-line for piecewise affine non-expansive mappings. Here, we constructively obtain an affine stationary regime from the termination of Howard's multi-chain policy iteration algorithm, proved by Dinado and Fox, and we address the infinite dimensionality of the problem using the non-expansiveness of an evolution semigroup. Eventually, the asymptotic periodicity in the last item follows from a result of Nussbaum. Another important and very practical result that we obtain is that another previous hypothesis, the throughput vector rho of the Petronet is a concave piecewise defined function of the place's initial marking m. So it is possible to state this fact using an explicit formula here, using usual objects of multi-chain MDP analysis, but I don't want to dive too much into details, just remark all this rho q appears to be the minimum of a sum of linear expressions in terms of the initial marking m. Instead, let's see how it applies to our running example of emergency health call center. Here, the two key throughputs are rho 1 and rho 3, since z1 gives the number of calls handled by the MRAs, and v3 gives the number of calls handled by the emergency physicians. Using the above results, we end up finding that rho 1 equals some rho star, and rho 3 equals pi rho star, where rho star is a minimum of three terms. The inbound calls arrival rate lambda, a second term Na over tau 1 plus pi tau 2, that we can easily interpret as the average calls handling speed of Na MRAs, and Np over pi tau 2 plus tau 3, the average calls handling speed of doctors. So you can see indeed that rho star is piecewise defined in terms of Na and Np, and if you project this surface back onto the resources plane, what you obtain is a phase diagram telling you which are the resources that may cause congestion in the system. Each phase is associated with the policy of the corresponding SMDP, or in other terms, give the bottleneck upstream places of synchronization transitions. For instance, suppose that the system is fluid because you have enough MRAs and enough emergency physicians. In this case, all the inbound calls are answered and rho star equals lambda. This means that the only limitation in the system is the arrival rate of calls itself. Now, suppose that you do not have enough MRAs, so that not all calls are picked up. Then, you end up in this phase of the diagram, where the MRAs impose the handling speed to the whole system, because emergency physicians cannot go faster, they wait for calls to be passed to them. The last possible situation is when there are not enough emergency physicians. In this case, again, the whole system is slowed down and the doctors impose handling speed to the call center, since MRAs wait for them to be available to transfer the very serious calls, and at some point all the MRAs are blocked. In particular, we can derive from this diagram recommendations of minimum agent staffing in terms of the call center parameters in order to be in the fluid phase, which is very interesting in practice. As the last result, we remark that the previous formula doesn't lead to very efficient computation of the throughput vector. Instead, we have that the throughput vector rho can be computed in polynomial time by solving the following linear program. Again, this result directly follows from the correspondence between patronets and SMDPs. We point out the fact that other LP approaches do exist to compute the throughput, such as the one introduced by Gojal and Jua in their work in 2004. Now, to finish the talk, I just say a few words on the priority mechanism framework. Indeed, we also developed another more complex model of emergency health call center. As we've seen before, a central weakness of the previous model is that when there are not enough emergency physicians, the MRAs are slowed down as well, and calls cannot be picked up due to the synchronization step. Here, we introduce a monitor reservoir to mitigate this effect, which requires a new type of agent, the reservoir MRA, who receives calls from the usual MRA and stocks them for the doctor, thus releasing the MRA to pick up new calls. This model is explained in detail in our conference paper, but the key point here is that it makes use of priority rules, which breaks the monotony of the system on the transition counter functions.
In this case, the existence of affine stationary regimes and the convergence towards them is no longer ensured. However, because we can still write the counter function dynamics, we remark that our correspondence with SMDPs still holds, up to introducing negative probabilities, for example here in the V3 equation. As a result, we can still obtain a partition of the space of resources, here in three dimensions, because we have three types of agents, as a polyhedral complex whose cells are congested phases, by applying policy enumeration. In this example of monitor reservoir, we obtain nine different phases, and again, minimum agent staffing recommendation in terms of the call center's parameters. From there, our further goal is to demonstrate theoretical results and characterization in this priority framework as well. This talk is now over, so let me thank you for your attention, and please find here a link to our paper and also a list of references.